Welcome to Trifecta Outdoors. I'm Dennis G. Uh, to my right is Pat McLean, Tommy Freeman, Jeff Grinstead, and Steve Mitchell. We're here today to talk about our 2014 Ohio wild turkey season and uh, we got off to a pretty good start. We was off, uh, we was actually working the first week and we couldn't get off till the following Saturday. But let me tell you, Saturday morning, Jeff and Tommy hit the woods and uh, it was on. Yeah, Tommy and I got into a spot where uh, Matt killed his first turkey at last year. We had heard birds in there. Um, we roosted a few the night before, and heard a couple goblins, so we was able to get in there and get set up. Um, Tommy got behind the ghost blind with the camera and I got down against this great big old oak tree there and uh, we started calling. We went in there, what, maybe a minute, a couple minutes, and he just started hammering and we got set up and you know everything went real good. I mean, we got the decoys out there. The gobbler came, came in. He actually had a Jake running around with him. We had a hen come in to our left, and it was, uh, it was a real good hunt. Yeah, I mean, the, the mosquitoes were biting my face uh, left and right. <laughs> Uh, we got done hunting and I was just covered in welts. So. <laughs> but uh, it was a really good morning. Um, you know, we went out on top of that hill and started hearing, ham hearing them hammering. We got to get set up really quick and, um, you know, they flew out right out to the shelf and um, they started walking back and forth and back and forth. And, um, you know, finally Jeff had a pretty good shot and I had, uh, you know, a pretty good camera uh, angle on him. So Jeff took the shot and, uh, you know, down he went right where he stood. So it was a really good hunt, really good, um, you know, way to take down our first turkey of the season. But yeah, it went really well. It was a great time. So we was on the board with that one. And I think Pat, he had a little bit of luck this year too. Yeah, G and I, we uh, we got in the blind early and the birds were just, uh, we had three different gobblers hammering. And <clears throat> we knew we was gonna do good. And uh, we had uh, a couple hens fly down the field and uh, and then they intercepted the one gobbler yeah. and uh, everything got dead quiet and we, we thought we were pretty well done but we stuck it out and we just call every now and then and we still had uh, hens with us the whole time so we had to really watch when we called because they were we had two decoys out and they were they were down in between the decoys yeah, they was walking between their decoys feeding in front of us yeah feeding in front of us and and you know, uh, we like like Pat said, we actually waited this, these birds out because they was really hammering on the roost, and we actually heard the hens fly out to them, and then, you know, they just shut up, and so me and Pat just sat there and talked, and probably about a half hour, 45 minutes, actually one opened up, and Pat made a call to him, and he answered, and we thought, well, is he answering the call? So we waited a little bit, and he gobbled, and Pat called to him again, and he was closer, so then we knew then yeah. we had him locked in, and... He came on a rope after Oh that. yeah, he came down off this big hill on a rope and he got out into the field and I had the camera set up in this ground blind but I couldn't get on him really good so I actually had to lean the tripod over to the right a little bit to get on him and and he came right in on a string right into our he decoy. Came in 19 yards. Oh yeah, and, uh, 19 yard shot. And I probably could have waited a little longer but uh, we yeah. was getting a little nervous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we was and, getting a little uh, nervous. But he was, he was, he once he got locked in on them two hen decoys he came right in and like I said, Pat said 19 yards and Pat smoked him. I mean, he dropped and I think he might have quivered a couple of times yeah. and that was it. Yeah, it was, That's it was one thing good. you can always count on is no matter what you, your setup is, they're always going to come in something a little bit different. Oh, yeah. 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 And you know, how perfect you so think you got. And you know, we use decoys and your t decoys can be a good thing sometimes and then sometimes it can be a bad thing. I think if a Tom has got hens, decoys is not good because he'll see him and he'll just kind of hang up out there and yeah. and you know wait for the, the hens to come to him but when he's by himself he you know like this one was you know he's yeah. seen them decoys he got locked in come right into us. Was yeah. it raining or some good weather? That it's day? good it weather. Good. It's a nice, nice sunny morning because I know when Tommy killed his his first bird he had like the weather a little bit didn't he? Yeah Pat and I uh again at his place uh, we went out yeah and it was you know raining the uh, Good little piece and so we uh we went down and got in the ground blind anyways um i came back um, from indiana a day early so i could uh, get some hunting in with pat um so we went down and got in the blind and got set up and um you know we really didn't hear anything starting off and um you know all of a sudden we heard one we heard one uh, start hammering and they looked down the field the yeah yeah they were uh they were late it had already been light for you know probably 45 minutes or an hour so um we were just we were just staying hopeful with the rain, but um, we looked down in the field to the right, and there he came. And um, 
you know, he was working his way over uh, to the left, and there were some uh, some hens in that other field. Several hens and two other gobblers that right. came in from the other side. Yeah, and then, um, you know, we're, we're looking at that guy across the field, and I look down to the right and tell Pat, you know, there's another one coming. <laughs> and so they just, you know, they kept coming in a line, so it was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty fun to watch. Um, I think we had seven birds in the field at one time. Yeah, I think we had four toms, and then we yeah. had a few hens, so. Yeah. Um, you know, they kept strutting back and forth and back and forth and they were just putting on a show that morning for us and, you know, we were we were kind of surprised with uh, how much it was raining, but, you know, we definitely enjoyed that hunt and, um, you know, had to uh, pat after a few times after they had strutted back and forth about two or three times in and out of the field, you know, Pat just said, we're going to have to, you know, make this, make this shot and, um, you know, I made the shot and, uh, you know, hit him and it was good enough where he went down and then Pat, uh, I think ran his all-time fastest 40 to get over to the bird and uh, make sure uh, that I'd finished him off. And, uh, was it like a six flat? Uh, six, yeah. I was thinking 6.5, but I think I, I, think I uh, held the start and stop button a little too long. So it was, um, it was real fun and that was the first time I had really hunted with Pat. So um, getting to be out in the woods with him. And, it was um, an exciting morning. Yeah, yeah it was, it was definitely fun. On. Good deal. Good and then, deal. And then we uh, we get Tommy's bird, and we're standing at the edge of the field, and we're talking, and we've been loud, and he'd already shot, and everything, and uh, we're standing there, and we look across the field, and a coyote comes right up out of the creek and pops right up in the field, wow. like he didn't even know we was around. I know you were there. How's that mossy oak candle you got? That's exactly right. Couldn't see yeah. it. Couldn't but see yeah, it. you know, I know more than you got. You killed that bird and got that text, and then it wasn't. I was checking out the bird, and I was actually in the middle of texting you back, and I get a text from Steve saying, hey, big bird down. So I'm going to let Steve tell you a little bit about his story, because Steve's was the one of the six that we killed that he did not get on camera. He had the video camera with him all week, and this was kind of the last minute deal, and he didn't grab the camera to take it with him. He was hunting by himself, and that's how it always goes when you don't take the camera. <laughs> that sure does. Uh, I was one of the fortunate ones. Um, I had taken that week off for vacation, and did a lot of hunting that week, hunted hard and uh, hunted with some other individuals hoping to get one of their kills on camera. Didn't happen. As Tommy said, the uh, weather was kind of hit and miss all week, a lot of rain. Um, there again, no excuses, just it's hunting. Um, fortunately, Sunday, the uh, day before to go back to work, went out, as Jeff said, uh, forgot my camera, of all things. Uh, went to where I anticipated the birds to be and nothing there. Um, one of one of those people that if you hear a bird, you gotta you gotta move. Yeah, yeah, gotta go get them. So, of course, it wasn't wasn't close, but uh, it was still on um, property that I could hunt. Uh, so made the trip, got up there and realized that that bird I had heard was way too far. I didn't anticipate that bird coming in at all, and he w he would respond every time I called, but I couldn't go because I didn't have permission to be to be there. So I kind of backed off that bird worked my way on out the ridge and uh, lo and behold when I got to the end hit the call fan earth one just just down over the bank and on the bank across from me so he wasn't gobbling to your calls when you called to no, the I, I don't know if he couldn't hear me because of the way the land laid because uh, he was down so low yeah but um, I think that's happened to a lot of guys you're yeah. setting up on something and all of a sudden another yeah, yeah. Gobbling, and you know you set up on him he could have been he could have heard you and just was coming in silent or yeah, whatever yeah, that's you know, true. Too, and then whenever he got close enough to you he said oh then here's you you know yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, you know I set up immediately and uh, Sat there and called, man. He was just, he was hot. He was looking for some love, for mm -hmm. sure. And uh, I didn't know Sounds if I was going to <laughs> didn't know if I was going to get the bird because he had a he had a big hill to climb. And uh, after about 20 minutes, he poked his head up over the hill and it was over. Lights yeah. out. Yeah. So all I needed to see was the white head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Steve called me. We we had hunted at uh, another property over in Athens County that we got, and actually it was Tommy and I. He was running the camera and. And lo and behold, I have, the first turkey I killed was a really long shot. I'm not going to get into yardage because none of you believe it. But it was a long shot. So this time, Sunday morning, we call in another turkey, two of them together. A lot closer shot, and I shot and missed. So, you know, what can I say? I just can't shoot them close. Yeah, go figure. I don't think you had your rocket launcher with you that day. But anyway, Steve called me, and uh, so we went out there and checked out his bird, Tommy and I did. 
we walked all over that place. And Steve and I asked Steve basically when I got there. I said, "Did you hear any more or anything else?" He said, "Yeah, I heard, I heard another one just ways away." But anyway, we went out there and walked around. And we yelped and yelped and yelped. And there's this one place on this property where we hunt where you got to walk a mile up the hill. But that's where the birds are. It seems like the deer. Yep. So we decided to hoof it up through there. And I said, "If we don't see nothing, I'm not going to be very happy because I didn't want to walk all the way up that hill." So we get all the way to the top of that hill, and sure enough, we yelp and call and yelp. Got the box call out. We threw everything we had out of didn't we, Steve? Yeah. And we did not get anything to go. So we start back down the hill, walk out along the field. It's about 11, 15, and we can only hunt till noon in Ohio, the first two weeks of yeah. season. So we get down, we're walking along the edge of this uh, field. It was a bean field last year. We're calling up in the woods and nothing, nothing. About that time, somebody hears something to our right yeah. about seemed like to me it was a mile and a half away <laughs> but we decided we looked at the watch it was 11 30 and we were like oh, what do you guys think and we all decided let's go get it, it was last chance it was sunday we all back to work on monday we kept calling and calling and nothing and nothing and we got to the end of that trail and we said let's take a break for a second here <laughs> we stopped and steve gets out this handy trusty box call yelped a couple times with it and lo and behold that turkey just hammers about what was how far was it 50 yards to our right maybe and he was coming fast, wasn't he? Yeah. What, what was, I mean, he was making he was all there. kinds of sounds. He was there. You know, Tommy was just, he was surprised how close that bird was. He was, we, try, he was trying, he was struggling to get the camera set up. Yeah, we were so lucky to get that camera set up before that bird, because he literally couldn't have been set up for a minute. Was it a minute? I think Maybe not even that You long. set up, you looked up, and there was the bird, wasn't yeah. it? And you turned the, you turned the yeah. camera. I hit the on right button front and record at the same time. Yeah. 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 You hit record, and there was the bird on one. one well, yeah, so we didn't get a lot of good footage of him, but Steve was sitting right to my left, and I was sitting there looking right where the bird was coming. I had the gun up, and I was saying to Tommy, have you got him? Have you got him? Have you got him? And Steve, he's worried to death that we're going to scare him. <laughs> Tommy's like, yeah, I got him. I got him. So I let him have it. He rolls and kind of steps back up, kind of falls down again, and he's kind of stumbling down the hill, and Steve lets him have it. So yeah, we dropped that bird right in his track. I think he was pretty much already dead with my shot, but Steve fish finished him out for us. Yeah, we, yeah. Didn't want to, we didn't want to go chasing a turkey halfway across Don't those mountains. I'd done walked up and down them hills enough. No yeah. doubt. No yeah. doubt. But, you know, that was kind of the end of that weekend. You know, he's a nice bird. It was a great hunt. I mean, we worked our butt off. I looked at my watch when I shot him. It was like five minutes till 12, so we just got it in, you know, just right at the last second. So it was an awesome hunt. We got it on video. It was a lot of fun. So I was tagged out at that point, but, you know, uh, the rest of the week we never really had any luck, but then uh, was the following weekend, Yeah. Um, Tommy got on a real nice bird. Yeah, uh, Jeff and I went back out to Steve's place and uh, we got out of the truck and started calling and it was again rainy that day um, for whatever reason we always hunted in the rain. Uh, Seemed like it. Yeah. Rain the whole turkey so day. we get out and Jeff makes a few calls and um, you know we're we're about to just take our stuff and go out and just see if we can make some calls in different places and see if we can hear something and you know I think I hear a turkey on the top of that you know mile long hill. Yeah I was gonna say let me get <laughs> the hill, yeah. right where we figured it. So and Jeff, I didn't hear it. Yeah Jeff I hadn't didn't heard hear it. it. So uh, we started climbing the hill and you know Jeff's complaining the whole way. And just, I'm just you He's know, probably listening right to him. Yeah that there yeah. better be a turkey up there. That's exactly <laughs> what I was getting. It was, You'll man. be able to see that here in a second on video too. So we were just I mean climbing that hill and we get to the top and um, like like we said Jeff hadn't heard it and Jeff starts making some calls and nothing so I'm you know sweating and looking at me like I'm about ready to kill him yeah <laughs> I'm like oh man I just made this guy lose some uh, weight I'm like oh, that's not acceptable so uh, we he makes some more calls and you know we move around a little bit at the top of that hill and um, you know we hear that turkey and he's a long way off at first so we kind of work our way over towards him a little bit more and we actually had to get down in the brush on this one, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, normally you call on a turkey, well, all one we wouldn't kill been in yeah. big woods with we're not fighting brush. We're at a field. And, and we couldn't hardly find an opening to get in in this place, you know. It was thick and you know, it was kind of off the side of the pasture and it was it was, it was was a tough spot to get down in. We got in there and got set up. Yeah, so Jeff kept, keeps calling and he just keeps getting closer and, you know, about that time he made his second, um, he hammered back to us a second time. Jeff was just like, this guy's coming, we gotta get down. So we didn't, you know, have time to set up anything. Luckily Jeff had the camera with him and um, I had the gun with me, so I just, you know, grabbed a tree, he grabbed a tree, and we were probably about 15 or 20 yards apart. 
So um, yeah, I never even had the tripod. I did yeah. the tripod on the camera enough, and I was just completely free-handed. So <laughs> so yeah, it was um, like Jeff said, it was heavy brush, and you know we thought he was coming into the right, and um, you know Jeff is. You know, hesitant to call to him. He doesn't want to over call to him because, you know, every time he calls, he probably called about four or five times and that was it. And this guy was just coming and he probably started off, I'd say, a good, you know, at least two football fields away, 200 yards. And so he was just coming. And um, so finally, the last time Jeff calls to him, he's off, you know, he's kind of straight ahead of me when I had been facing to the right. So I had to make a quick turn to my left and, uh, and that's where Jeff pointed the camera. and. Then through all that brush, you could just see that white head sticking out. And He was know. hammering, coming. Like Thomas said, we thought he was coming from straight on. We're sitting there looking one way. Then his last gobble was 25 yards to our left, maybe 30 yards to our left. So we, luckily, he's in the brush. If he's in the open woods, we couldn't have turned on that bird. I don't, I don't think there was any way. Luckily, he was still down in the brush. And we were able to turn, kind of both of us. I saw him out of the corner of my eye. We both turned simultaneously. The bird steps out of the brush. I got the camera on him for a few seconds. Cut boom. He lets him out. It's all over. That's that. a nice bird. Yeah, it was yeah, a really real good. nice bird. Yeah. Real nice bird. But you know, you know, we'll get this wrapped up. I just want to say thanks to Mossy Oak. Yeah. Awesome camo, man. Every bird we got on, we either shot and missed, or they came in and didn't have a clue we were there. You know, the Ghost Blind. And Ghost Blind makes a heck of a product. You know, we set up behind it a few times and hunted behind it. We actually ran the camera behind it most yeah. of the time. Yeah, most yeah. You know, most it's, season, it's yeah. awesome for that. Really what we need to do is get another one so we can have the hunter behind right. one and the yeah. cameraman behind another one. But, you know, basically we want to thank everybody for coming to our site. We're trying to do some really cool stuff this year. We've got a lot of things going on. And we're having a lot of fun doing this. And, uh, and we've got a lot of people. People are getting on Facebook and, and liking us and following us on Twitter. And, and Instagram now. We just got a lot of really neat things going on and we basically really want to thank everybody for coming on there and checking us out and, and believing in us. I mean, a lot of people, we're getting a lot of people behind us, a lot more sponsors and things. And really, we're just getting ready now to start, uh, we've got food plots in, getting ready to get into deer season this year and uh, we cannot wait. We're just so excited about deer season. And, but there's one thing you got to remember though, if you're out there hunting, it's been a long, hot day in October and you haven't seen nothing. Expect the unexpected. <laughs>